Okay, we are in this Algebra 2 review. Algebra 2 review. Chapter 1 through 3. And this is part 6. Part 6. It looks like we're going to have 7 parts to this whole series. Um, we're going to get all the way down to number 30. And we're actually going to skip over a couple of these. So let's just do that. I don't need to erase them. I'm going to cover these. We're going to cover up 27, 28. We're not even going to look at those because they're crossed out. Don't need them. All right, let's look at number 25. It says solve the equation. So I got 7 times this absolute value thing equals 21. And the general idea is that we can split the absolute value into a plus or minus case. But first, we got to get it by itself. So I got to get rid of the 7. How do I do that? Well, I could multiply both sides by 1, 7. And what would, do, what would that do? Well, 7 over 7 is 1. That's awesome. 21 over 7 is 3. So that gives me the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 3. So that gives me two options here. That means that x plus 3 equals 3, or the negative of x plus 3 equals 3. So for the first one, that's pretty easy. You subtract 3 from both sides, and you got x equals 0, which does work. That does work. If you plug in 0, that'd be 0 plus 3. Absolute value of that is 3. Multiply it by 7, and then you get 21. Now on the other side, a couple things you can do. You can distribute this negative or multiply both sides by negative. Let's go ahead and distribute it. That would give me negative x minus 3 equals 3. Okay, now I got some crazy stuff going on. Let's add 3 to both sides. Negative x equals 6, which means that x equals negative 6. So that would be my two options. x equals negative 6, x equals 0, and there you go. That's it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's look at this next one. We got solve. x minus 10 is in the absolute value over 2. And then it says to graph it as well. Okay, so when it says graph and all you have is x, we're going to end up with a number line. So let's go ahead and kind of give ourselves a preview of that. Looks like we're going to have a number line in the end. We'll get to it. Let's go ahead and solve it first. So again, we got the absolute value part. I'm going to highlight that for myself. Um, and you should kind of make a note to yourself that you need to get that by itself. Once that is taken care of, then the absolute value, so that whole highlighted piece, I need to get that by itself. Once that's taken care of, then I can start splitting it into the two possibilities. So first, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Why? Because 2 over 2 is 1, and now all of a sudden, x minus 10, absolute value is by itself. All right, so I say less than or equal to. On the other side, I have 16. Now i got to split this up into two possibilities. One of them is x minus 10 is less than or equal to 16. The other one is the negative of that x minus 10 is also less than or equal to 16 because it's the plus or the minus. That's what the absolute value does. It says, oh, it could be the positive one or the negative one. Either way, they're less than or equal to 16. All right, so I got equations to solve here. I'm going to solve the first one. This is a piece of cake. Plus 10 on both sides, you got x is less than or equal to 26. Let's look at the other one. Now I got this negative x and the minus 10, so let's go ahead and multiply negative x into these, the, the negative in, the, in there. We got negative x plus 10 is less than or equal to 16. So I'm going to subtract 10 now. Let's see what that gives me. Negative x is less than or equal to 6. Okay, at this point, I want to get rid of that negative. But i got to keep in mind, whenever I multiply or divide by a negative, so for example, if I were to just kind of put a plus and then a minus, i got to flip that symbol too. So that is really saying x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I have a number line. And yeah, there's a lot of things in between here, but I'm just going to look at the important numbers. Those are 26 and negative 6. So I got negative 6 and 26. And because it does say equal to, and this says equal to, that means that these are closed boundaries, that they're filled in. Now, because they're just a dot for the, each boundary, I'm still going to fill it in. 
Then the question is for each of these, let's see, x is less than or equal to 26. So that means I'm going to go less than x is smaller than 26. And then for the other one, it says x is greater than negative 6. So it's going to be bigger than negative 6. And in fact, these two arrows converge into the middle and get pandemonium. No, not really. It's just they converge. They cross over each other, and you got this overlap. That's it. Okay, that was almost too much fun. Let's jump ahead to number 29. All right, let's look at number 20, 29. It says classify the system, determine the number of the solutions. So you probably might be looking at this whole classify the system, and you're like, ah, what does that mean? Well, I think you'll see after we kind of get through some stuff here. Um, let's do some algebra to see what we can do to maybe eliminate or something with these equations. I noticed that if I were to divide, well, let's go ahead and multiply. I'm going to multiply the top by a number. I'll multiply the top by 5. And what that would do, I'd get 5 times negative 5x. That would give me negative 25x. Then 5 times, I'm going to multiply by negative 5. How about that? That would give me plus 25x. And I'd multiply negative 5 times negative 4. That would give me plus 20y. And then negative 5 times negative 4 equals negative 20. Now, if you were to kind of look at this in columns, those x's are going to make a 0. Those y's are going to make a 0. And a lot of times you're like, oh, that's cool, because it like gets rid of all the stuff that I'm working on. And I'll just have 0. So that means on the left side, I would have 0. On the right side, I would combine the negative 2, or the 2 and the negative 20, that would give me negative 18. And then your brain goes, what? Those aren't equal. In fact, they are not equal. That is not true. And that means that there is no solution. And you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? How could there be no solution? Well, the solution for two equations means where they cross. And if there's no solution, that means there's no crossing. And if there's no crossing, that actually means parallel. It's like a parallel universe. So that's really what's happening. 0 does not equal negative 18. It is no solution. There's no crossing, and it's parallel. Now, what if, what if, you know, just by chance, I'm going to add a new page here. Like if you had a couple of equations, and you solved them, and then you wound up with something like 0 equals 0. Well, that is true. And in fact, it's not only true, it's always true, which means you must always be intersecting. And if you're always intersecting, you're actually just, it's called overlapping. So how do I classify that one if I'm just overlapping? Well, to be overlapping like this, um, that's really, uh, we call it consistent, I guess you could say. It's either consistent or inconsistent. But the idea is, is if you get 0 equals 0, that's always true. That means it always intersects and it's just overlapping. Okay, so that's that. Let's go back and do some more. Right now, we got two snow resorts offer private lessons to their customers. Big time ski charges for, you know what, this sounds like a really important one that maybe we need to highlight some stuff. So I'm going to say $4 per hour and $93 insurance. Okay, Powder Hills, I'm going to highlight this in a different color, Powder Hills charges $12 per hour and $45 insurance. So it's more expensive per hour, but it's cheaper to start with only $45 insurance. For what number of hours is the cost of lessons the same for each resort? Make a graph to represent the equations and the solution. Okay. So we got $4 per hour, $93, $12 per hour, and $45. So we got one group A, oh, let's take that back, take that back. One group A, we have $4 per hour, and then $93 insurance. And the other one was $12 per hour, and only $45 for insurance. All right, so what's going on here? Let's say we're taking this graph and we'll draw a straight line. That's kind of ridiculous there. So here's my graph. This is what I'm looking at. 
And if I'm doing $4 per hour with $93 insurance, that means I'm going to start up here at, let's say, $93. I'll call this 93 And it's only $4 per hour, though. So that means that I'm going to go for one hour, I'm going to raise it by four. And I'll go up to 97 And then the next hour, after two hours, I'm going to add another four to that, which would put me at 101. And I'm actually looking at kind of a graph here that's got this slope that raises up $4 every one hour. So that's a slope right there, 4 over 1. And this 93, this initial cost, is actually a, an intercept. So this number here, the starting value, this initial value, initial cost, I guess you could say, is our y-intercept. And this $4 per hour is a slope of 4 over 1, which means I could turn in these numbers into equations. So let's look at equation A. That would be like y equals 4 over 1 times x, because that's our slope, times x, plus the y-intercept, which is 93. The other equation would be 12 over 1x, but this time it's plus 45. That one would start like further down here at 45, but they'd go up 12, you know, more like this every jump. And then they'd eventually start to cross. And the question is, where do they cross? Okay, well, for these two to cross, all you really need to do is, you know, just some substitution and, and solving. So we got the equation A, equation B. I noticed that they're both equal to Y, so that means this piece here, I can move and substitute for that Y right there. So that would give me 4X plus 93 equals 12x plus 45. When these are equal, they would cross because it's a, an intersection. They're true at the same time. Well, let's see what would happen. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x from each side. Subtract 45 from each side. And what would that give me? Let's see, 45 from this is going to be 48. And on the other one, 12x minus 4x, that's going to be 6x. So if I were to divide both of these, then I could get that x equals 8. And what does that really mean? I think that means that I have to go all the way out to 8 hours here for these to cross. So maybe it looks more like this, and like this. Yeah, we got a graph, something that looks like that. There we go. So 8 hours. And then the question might be, well, how much is that actual cost? Well, let's see. If it's $4 an hour plus $93, that means I got $4 times 8 hours plus the $93. Let's make sure this comes out correct. That would be 32 plus 93. Altogether, that would be 125. 125. Now, if I were to do the same thing for the other one, that would be $12 times 8 hours plus 45. All right, so 12 times 8, that's 80, how much is that? No, that's 96. Is that right? 8 times 12. Yeah, 96. So that's going to be 96 plus 45. Oh, I don't think we're actually going to be on target here. It looks like we're a little bit off. So what's going on that we missed? You know, I think that I probably miscalculated with this. I said that 48 and 45 need 93. We got 4x over here. Oh, what? This is 8x, which makes this an 8, which makes this an 8, which makes this a 6. So 6 is the number that we should have plugged in. Good thing we actually checked our answer there. So that means that 4 times 6, which would be 24 plus 93, which is going to give me, and you guys are probably already ahead of me because you probably caught that right away. 2493 is going to make uh, 117. And then 12 times 6, that's going to be 72 plus 45. Well, all right, this looks a lot better. That's going to be 117 as well. So they are the same at 6 hours. And how much is it? It's $117.
that's it. Okay, so that is a long video. Uh, the last one hopefully won't be as long as these have been. Um, so that's it. We'll see you in the next video.